the spice is nice with the mean. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a Jamaican curry. And I've chosen two proteins. I've chosen chicken and fish. Now, we're not going to spend very long on it. Usually, I do uh, try to take you through it on the longest journey. But today, we're going to do it quick, like curry in a hurry sort of thing. I'm going to do fish and chicken today. Let's start with chicken first. Okay, so here we have thyme, red peppers, two scotch bonnets. Remember, I like to use, oops, remember I like to use the green one, but I've chosen the yellow one today for the fish. Only because mm, the flavor and the aroma, the fragrance rather, of a yellow scotch bonnet is very fruity. And I want that with the fish because I'm gonna add some tomatoes. Um, we have bell peppers, scallion, onions, tomatoes. What else do we have here? And some red bell peppers. We have green bell peppers and red bell peppers. And then we have black pepper, grated garlic, pimento seed. Don't forget, pimento seed is a very big thing in Jamaican cooking. We have whole garlic, paprika, dry thyme, and sea salt. Look at that beautiful sea salt. You know, I just can't get over that sea salt. I mean, the sea salt. I mean, look at that. I just, I, I get so emotional over that gorgeous sea salt. And then here we have the curry and two chicken bouillon cubes. Oh, good. It's a little greenish, but pay that no, never mind. Once it cooks and it melts and it transforms, because you know it, it dies and then it resurrects into something far more beautiful, like a butterfly. So here we are. Oh my good god, almighty king. soul and I'm sure every soul needs. We're just gonna pour all of that over. To marinate. And you're going to massage her in like so. So here we are. I had the oil heated up already, it's nice and hot because we're going to um, toast the garlic, uh, which is going to create a wonderful marriage with the toasted curry powder. Usually in Jamaican say you have to burn the curry first before you put in the chicken or the beef or the goat or whatever the case is. But we don't mean burn, like burn down the house of cinders, that it's not, you know. Um, it's not delicious and it's not pleasurable to the tongue. We're gonna toast them, which gives the curry more character and more boldness and more intensity. It's very, very nice, very delicious. Trust me when I tell you. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take about a full tablespoon of pureed garlic. You just drop it in the oil, and you're going to use like about two full tablespoons of the curry. And you have to move very fast with this. Right. See how, see how, how it stays, how it goes. And then, see it's starting to toast a little bit. Okay, as you can see the color is changing. Just give it a moment. Don't do that. I'm, you know, I'm used to the pot. Don't do that. Don't handle it with your fingers because that's very hot. Okay. And then we're going to put the chicken in. Okay. See how gorgeous that is. Now, I'm constantly in conversation. I'm constantly in touch with what's going on in the pot. Be it curry or anything else. It's like it's pleased with my my touching, my caring, my intentions. It's perfectly balanced. 
So I've just mashed a little piece of ginger and we're gonna just plop it in the corner like that. And that's enough. Okay, so I just dropped a little piece of ginger in. Um, and so we're going to put the foil on top. You know I like to use the foil because the foil actually creates a very, very love um, steaming effect and creates a, a, a faster cooking effect. So it'll cook faster while it's still bubbling and brewing very vigorously. Remember, I always say a vigorous flame, a vigorous flame. Right? And then I'm gonna turn her down very low. I added a few potatoes, which I do sometimes, but it's not necessary. And you can see that beautiful yellow curry color. And I've cotched my little scotch bonnet on top. And I'm just going to taste it. It's flawless. Flawless. Flawless, flawless, flawless. So I'm just going to catch my little pepper there on top. All the potatoes. And the potatoes will bring the, the gravy together and give a nice body and a nice finish for another 10, about another 10 minutes on a low flame so that the potatoes break down and so that the fragrance from the scotch bonnet is released before we serve her up.